father was killed in Iraq, so my uncle taught me about stolen valor. I never thought I'd tell anyone this. It was ten years ago. I was in a diner with my uncle Barry and my cousins James and Derek at the southern state line of Arkansas. My uncle was a bully, and I wasn't too fond of my cousins either, but I was stuck with them. My mom had flown down to Shreveport to care for my dying grandmother, so I got the pleasure of going down there the long way with my uncle. A couple of days sitting in my uncle's Lexus and listening to Limp Biscuit and inane conversation was the price I had to pay to go watch my grandma die. Didn't seem fair. I watched my cousins talk to their dad and I hated them for it. I was jealous. I lost my dad in Iraq shortly after I was born. I never knew him. Being around them made his absence so much worse than it normally was. What happened after that diner made me think about my father even more and the things he would have taught me if he was still alive. All I had from him, other than the stories my mother told me, was the creed that he lived and died by. Semper Fi. Look at that. What? The counter. My uncle and my cousins were staring at a little guy who was wearing a dirty marines uniform standing at the counter of the diner. He couldn't have been more than 20. You gotta be fucking kidding me. He's even got a bunch of damn medals pinned on him. All three of them were staring at the young kid with looks of disgust. What's the big deal? I honestly had no idea. My cousin's eyes went wide like they were trying to get me to shut up. My uncle exhaled and glowered at me. You think he's actually in the military? You think he earned those medals or that uniform? That belongs to someone else. Someone who earned it. Maybe it belongs to his dad or something. My uncle narrowed his eyes. One of my cousins smacked me in the back of the head. It didn't hurt. It was just meant to make me feel weak and submit. Surrounded by the three of them at that table, it did the job. We watched the kid in the uniform grab a couple of bags from the woman behind the counter with his dirty white gloves. He was reaching for his wallet to pay for whatever was inside, but she waved him off and told him that it was on the house. Anything for a man in uniform? The woman laughed. My uncle was shifting in his seat, like he wanted to get up and beat the hell out of the kid as he walked out of the diner. Stolen valor. It was the first time I heard that phrase. As my uncle went on and explained it, I couldn't help but think of stories that my mother had told me about my uncle. He hated my father and the feeling was mutual. He thought he was an idiot for signing up and a failure for not coming back to my mother. My uncle had never served in the military. He was a lawyer. Derek was almost 19 and James was almost out of high school and I had never heard either of them express any interest in going to the military. It was weird how all three of them spent the rest of our meal bitching about some kid that they didn't even know wearing a uniform that they never had any interest in wearing themselves. My uncle told us to go to the car and wait while he took care of the bill. After a few minutes, I watched him do a half-assed run out of the diner toward the car, and when he got in, he was laughing. He sped out of the parking lot and turned down one of those windy roads. If he's not going to make that kid pay, then why should we? My cousin started laughing. I didn't say anything. I was the smallest guy in the car and the youngest at almost twelve. I had fallen prey to having the shit beaten out of me by my cousins before, and it was still a long way to Shreveport. About a couple of miles away from the diner, my uncle saw the kid again in his headlights, walking down the side of the road. My uncle flew past the kid and honked his horn while he did it. The kid jumped and both bags that he was carrying fell to the gravel shoulder under his feet. My uncle slammed on the brakes and he looked at the three of us. No, I can't do this. Not in front of you guys. Sometimes you've got to stand up for what you believe in no matter the cost. That's what men do. He looked at me. I'm not going to let people like that disrespect people like your father and his sacrifice. With him gone, someone has to be an example for you. I wanted to scream at him that he didn't even like my dad, but I didn't. I was scared. He turned the car around and drove back toward the kid. He was on the side of the road picking up his bags when my uncle drove up. Uncle Barry put his shiny car in park. Come on, boys. 
we all got out of the car. Fireflies were buzzing around like mad on a light breeze in the dying light. I watched my uncle roll up his sleeves while he walked up to the poor kid, who was obviously terrified. He was swimming in a uniform that was too big for him, and his hat was pushing down on his ears, making them stick out straight under the weight of it. The legs of his pants were bunched up and rolled around his ankles. I couldn't stop staring at his dirty white gloves that had two holes on the knuckles. Just out for a walk tonight, Sergeant. Both of my cousins stood on either side of the kid while my uncle stared into his face. James was filming everything with his phone. I hung back wanting to be anywhere else. I asked you a question. What are you doing out here? The kid was stammering as he answered. It was obvious that he was special, severely so. His voice was broken and the cadence was off. It was like blood in the water to someone like my uncle. I'm taking dinner back home to my mom, sir. Why are you wearing that uniform, Mr. Gump? My cousins laughed, but the look on my uncle's face was dead serious. It belonged to my daddy. Daddy, huh? Your daddy's okay with you wearing that? Well, he's in heaven, sir. He died in Iraq when I was little. My heart sank. My nephew's daddy died in the war, too. You don't see him wearing something he didn't earn. I think your daddy's probably rolling in his grave with you out here parading around in that thing. If he was still around, he'd tell you that it's inappropriate. My mama said it's okay. Well, your mama must be as dumb as you sound. Now take it off. What? Take the fucking uniform off. His voice was so cold. Ah, uh, I have to go. The kid tried to walk around, but my uncle wouldn't let him. I said, take off that uniform or I'll take it off you myself. The kid looked at the hard faces of my family and then he looked at me. I couldn't take it. Uncle Barry, this isn't right. My uncle turned and slapped me across the face to shut me up. I remember it hurt so bad, but it was nothing compared to what happened next. He turned back to the kid and started snapping his fingers. His expensive gold watch glinted in the headlights. Hey, I am Sam. I said, take off the fucking uniform. I was helpless and didn't know what to do. I wanted to help that kid so bad. The kid tried to push through, but my cousins pushed back and in the scuffle, he punched Derek right in the face. My uncle and cousins began to beat the poor kid while all I could do was stand there and beg for them to stop. Then I watched my uncle and my cousins strip that kid down to his t-shirt and boxers while he was screaming for them to stop. Once they had the uniform off of him, my uncle stepped on his chest. The kid was bloodied and bruised and he stopped struggling as my uncle grinded his foot down, driving the kid's back into the gravel shoulder. You finished? Good. Uncle Barry walked away and gathered the uniform and threw it into the trunk of his car. He straightened his hair back and then he squatted down next to the crying kid. Here's the deal, dummy. You're going to walk back home and you're never going to wear another one of your daddy's uniforms again. Got it? Yes, sir. My uncle helped him up and even handed him the two bags they had been carrying. Get the fuck out of here. The kid started to run away. I said, walk, dipshit. The kid slowed down and walked. He was shaking. He was crying. My family was laughing. We stood there for a minute or two while the kid walked away barefoot and crying. My uncle turned to me and gave me a finger gun and a big perfect white smile. Simplify. It sounded like a slur coming from him. Not only a phrase he appropriated, but something he was mocking. We drove off. I stared out into the dark, thinking about that poor kid walking home like that. I thought about the uniform in the trunk. I wondered what my father would do if he were around. I wondered what the kid's father would do if he were around. My cousins couldn't stop laughing while they were watching the video of the whole incident in the back seat. I had been instructed to sit in the front so my uncle could explain to me that what just happened was an absolute good. We weren't more than 10 miles down the road when my uncle swerved the car to the left and we went tumbling off of the road. 
We only saw it for a split second, but there was something huge running in the middle of the road toward us after a blind corner, and we just missed it. It looked like the shadow of a naked man. Uncle Barry lost control and the car fell into a gully. We flipped over and over before coming to a rest. For a long time, everything was fuzzy. My eyes wouldn't focus and everything was dark. I heard metal screeching and popping. I heard growling. Derek started mumbling and then he started screaming behind me. His voice faded away into the distance before it was gone altogether. My eyes started to focus. My uncle was starting to wake up and he was moaning. Then he started screaming and crying. My eyes could finally focus. James hadn't been wearing his seat belt and his body was broken in several different angles. He was a bloody show in the back seat, still holding his cell phone with that video playing. He was staring back at my uncle with glassy, lifeless eyes. Derek wasn't in the back seat. We struggled to get out of the car. Uncle Barry yelled at me to call 911. One of the headlights was still working and pointing off into the woods. I had no service on my phone. My uncle was weeping and calling out for Derek. After a moment, we heard Derek answer. He was screaming somewhere out in the dark. My uncle searched in the glove box for his flashlight. I noticed that the trunk was open. The uniform was gone. My uncle grabbed me and we started following the sounds of Derek's screams. The sound was all around us and we turned several times to follow it. Something must have been dragging him in different directions. He was out there pleading for his life. He was scared. With a final scream for help, we didn't hear Derek anymore. The forest was alive with the sounds of wind and frogs, but no Derek. My uncle yelled for him several times until he fell silent and started crying. That's when I heard it. It sounded like a dog barking, but different, almost like a howl. Something moved out in the woods and we barely caught a glimpse of it in the beam of the flashlight. It sounded like a dog barking, but different, almost like a howl. Something moved out in the woods and we barely caught a glimpse of it in the beam of the flashlight. Someone was out there. Someone big. My uncle moved the flashlight around. The barking and the howling got louder and louder until it was everywhere. My uncle's flashlight went out. The only light left was the meager beam through the trees from the headlight far behind us. The barking stopped. For a moment, it was silent. A tall shadow was in front of us. I thought it was a thick tree trunk at first, but then it moved. A huge man in the dark. He was growling at us. I saw two bloody white gloves. One held an arm that had been torn from the socket and the other held a blade. Before I could even turn around to run, my uncle had pushed me forward as a sacrifice and as I hit the ground with my face at the feet of the man in the shadows, I could hear my uncle running back towards the car. I was sure I was dead, but when I looked up from the ground, the man in the shadows was gone. I didn't move for a while. I stayed on my knees in the dirt while I heard my uncle making the same noises that my cousin did off in the distance. I didn't move until I heard the sirens off in the distance. I don't know who that was in the woods that night. I don't know if it was the kid's father or mine, or just some naked kook who decided to kill three members of my family and spare me. The authorities never found the bodies of my cousins or my uncle. They did find the tattered old uniform folded neatly on the hood of my uncle's car, though, and scratched in the paint of that shiny Lexus were the words my father lived and died by. The same words that I said to that kid when I gave him his father's uniform back. Thank you for listening and delving into the dark with me. I would be so, so grateful if you please click the thumbs up, subscribe, and leave me a comment. The more engagement this video gets, the more YouTube will push my content to others, and thus our twisted little community will grow. All stories read on this channel will be available on Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and many other podcast apps. Links are in the description. Thank you.
you again for listening, and I look forward to hearing from you.